Now, as uh, South Africa and Israel gear up uh, to go head to head against uh, each other before the International Court of Justice, uh, there is keen interest on the process and how all of this is likely to unfold, how things were done in the past in this particular regard. Let's just try to get uh, some perspective now and speak to Dr. Varanas Variava, UP Senior Law Lecturer. Thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Let's just start by looking at how the arguments are likely to unfold. I mean, we know that. South Africa will present its case tomorrow and then on Friday it's Israel's turn. Thank you very much for having me on your show. Um, the first thing I should say about tomorrow's case is that it, it is a case asking for provisional measures, which is a form of interim relief that is used, uh, that is, uh, that is, that you can ask for at the ICJ. Um, it is not a full decision on the merits, and that will be a case that will probably take many, many years. Um, all that our people will ask for tomorrow is that they're going to ask for provisional uh, relief that will basically stop uh, what is currently happening in Gaza. And they, have, they will put forward a case that will show that there are numerous acts and there's substantial evidence of this to show that a genocide is plausible. So what are they... What they are basically trying to do is to stop a complete genocide and ensure that what is going on now will stop. They are relying on Article 2 of the Genocide Convention, and that lists a range of acts that fall within the definition of genocide. So what's going to happen, so for example, you look at the number of killings um, as part of Article 2 of the definition. So far, there have been almost 23,000. I don't know if the numbers have gone even higher today. You have to show uh, what numbers of people have been displaced. We know that 80% of the population, 1.9 million people have already been displaced. So based on all these different causes or acts that have been outlined in the Genocide Convention and the matching of the evidence by our team, they are going to make a case for provisional measures. And like I said, this is not um, the, the, the end of the case. Yeah. The case is likely to carry on for many years. This is just urgent interim relief. And yesterday here on the show, we had a conversation with a former ambassador um, who says that the matter is likely to start with strong arguments on jurisdiction, especially when one takes a step back and looks at that Gambia versus Myanmar matter. And there was that argument over jurisdiction. Is that your reading as well? Yes, uh, I think it's highly likely that the state of Israel is going to make whatever, what we call in law, preliminary points to try and get the case chucked out. Um, what South Africa has in its very strong favor is that there is very strong precedent, not only in the Gambia versus Myanmar, but also last year there was the case of Ukraine versus Russia. And in these kinds of cases, there are always jurisdictional points. So in the Gambia versus Myanmar, um, they basically argued that because, um, you, you know, they weren't a party to the case and all of that, they didn't um, have jurisdiction. But the point is, um, you know, the Genocide Convention was one of those conventions that came about shortly after World War II as a result of the Holocaust, which resulted in the killing of six million Jews as well as other minority groups. Um, many people have signed on to this convention, uh, more than many other conventions. Uh, and our courts, as well as customary, customary international law, says everybody is bound. All state parties and non-state parties are, are bound by the Genocide Convention, and it is uh, the duty of the international community to stop a genocide. So South Africa, as part of our international obligations, does have jurisdiction based on the strong precedent and based on the importance of the Genocide Convention. And I suppose then it's going to be quite significant then for, for South Africa as it's making the argument in the application that South Africa is acutely aware of its own obligation as a state party to the Genocide Convention and, and, and especially listening to what you're saying in order to prevent genocide. Yes. So, yes, as you know, we as South Africans, um, we have a long history 
of apartheid ourselves. Um, we have a long relationship with Palestine and the recognition of Palestine. Our president, um, our first president, Nelson Mandela, there's the iconic uh, image of him uh, hugging Yasser Arafat. So, yes, um, we show, we have shown solidarity with the struggle in Palestine. And more than that now, in the face of um, a lot of adversity, South Africa has been very brave, and President Cyril Ramaphosa, Minister Pando, uh, everybody within the department, um, you know, we congratulate them for the strong principled stance we, where we are acting according to our values that we have uh, so long professed to have, both constitutional and our commitments to international law. And now we are we are putting our money where our mouths where our mouths are. So yes, I think as lawyers, human rights lawyers, um, we are very proud of that. All right, let me thank you so much for your time and hopefully we speak again, um, you know, during the course of, of these particular arguments because there are some more important facts as well to ventilate on. But thank you so much for putting us in the picture and just giving us a sense of what these next two days are all about. That was uh, Dr. Faranaz Variava, UP Senior Law Lecturer.